If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. In this episode, we lay down track the regular guy way. Well, actually, a lot of people do it like this. <laughs> but it starts right now. It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. This is a show about regular people building their model railroads as regular people. Um, we call it a how-to show because I show you how I do stuff, but then also, if you look in the comments of these videos, people show me how to do stuff. They show everyone how to do stuff. It's an awesome community to be a part of. So if you're into that sort of thing, why not just subscribe? And then don't forget to push that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Hey, just before we get going, a little bit of housekeeping. As many of you know, we're moving <laughs> from the place I live to a new house right in the middle of building my layout. Boy, isn't that exciting. So what that means to us is this. Uh, we might have to take some twists and turns or reroute some things while we're working on the layout, while we're packing up to move to the new place. Because frankly, I don't want to do anything now that I've got to screw up to take over there and fix. We've seen enough of that on this channel, so there you go. The really good news for this is, uh, I'm gonna document all that. I'm going to document from the time I pull off the structures and tear the thing apart, moving it, building a new substructure, installing it when we get to the new place. Got some ideas for that, although we haven't picked a new place yet. <laughs> anyway, so that should be a lot of fun, and even if it isn't, at least I get a new house out of the deal. All right, rail fans, let's get into this. As many of you already know, we are all the way up to the roadbed stage of the layout. Put that in last week, pretty happy about it. Looks really cool. So this week, I wanna put the track on that. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay track on it. Uh, the regular guy way, we'll see what that looks like in just a minute. But something I'll point out now, we're gonna point out a couple times during the video is this. Two of the turnouts are controlled by switch motors uh, automatically by the layout. That way the turnout is always aligned for the oncoming train as it makes its way around the turnaround loop. Now, the way to prep the turnout, the way to mount the switch motor and the wiring and yada yada, all that crap, um, is kind of its own episode. Uh, we don't have time to do that today, so if you'll just trust me on that, when we get to that part, I will show you how I do it, and uh, maybe there's something you can learn from it, Maybe there's something you can teach me about it. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the hobby room right now. Hey, welcome back to the hobby room, to the Brownsmith subdivision, and our second deck expansion just chugging right along. Uh, today, what I'd like to try to get done is to put some track down. Now, there's a reason I want to put some track down uh, right now, even though we still have a whole lot of roadbed to put in. That's because over here under Switch Junction, and I'll show it to you in just a minute, we're building the Helix Complex, which means we have to put the lower level of track on to put the next level to actually get up to be able to put in this uh, challenging Helix scenario that we're gonna be building up here. So I just thought uh, today we're gonna lay some track and have a good time. I was also hoping to put in my two um, switch motors for my two automated turnouts and wire everything up just so we can run a train for the fun of it. Well, ha, I don't have any wire. And I, I went to the electronics store, I went to hardware stores, I went to like three or four places today, couldn't find the wire I needed, just couldn't find it anywhere. Nobody carries number 22 stranded wire in stock apparently, so I had to order some. Uh, by the time I'm done shooting this episode, maybe it'll show up, maybe it won't, but for sure next week we'll, uh, we'll see how things work down here on the loop. So anyway, let's get right to work, shall we? The first thing I want to show you is right over here on these two loops. We'll start first with the uh, stack train line loop. And if you can see here, I've got me a stack train laid out. And the reason I did that is because I need to know the, the longest train that I'm gonna have on this loop, and here's why. We're gonna make this an auto-reversing loop using a Digitrax AR1. And with the Digitex AR1, you have to have the entire train inside the loop. Now, that's not 100% true, because if you're running plastic wheels on your freight cars, uh, it's not a big deal. But if you're running steel wheels, like most of us are, what can happen is where the isolated part of the track joins up with the not isolated part of the track, when your rail car wheel hits that, it will cause the AR1 to flip its voltage 
or its polarity, and at the same time, you got a locomotive over here doing it, it'll short the system out. So unless you're running plastic wheels, you gotta keep the whole train inside the loop. So right now I've got two full stack trains plus two deep well cars, two locomotives. That's a pretty good sized train for this layout. So here's what I've done. Based on some information I gleaned from having these automated turnouts up at Switch Junction, I need enough of a run time from the time it triggers the automated turnout uh, for it to happen before the train gets there and derails because the turnout's not in position. Now, if I'm running at scale speeds, uh, everything should be perfecto. So what I like to do is give a safe margin. Now I've taken a piece of cork roadbed here and I've cut it to a length that I feel pretty comfortable with as far as running time to get to the turnout to give it a chance to flip. This is basically 16 and a half inches. That's just what I came up with because, um, you know, I like the number as it turns out. Whatever, let's put it down here. Let me show you something. So if I put this down on here and bend it around, you see that, well, it's hard to see, but right here is where that 16 and a half inches is, which means on this side, we're gonna have the block detector that's going to sense the train and flip the turnout. And then on this side, we'll have the AR1, which will sense a short and flip the polarity. Now, I know I'm talking a lot and going blah, 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 a whole bunch, but hopefully as we start cutting in this track and laying it out, you're gonna sort of see what it is we're trying to get done. And over here, we've got the other loop that's kind of part of this complex, and this is the one that the Port Smith Line train runs on during continuous operations. Actually, uh, on that far track there, I'm gonna use that uh, double that maybe as like a tail track for the yard. I haven't figured that out yet necessarily, but it's certainly long enough for the size yard we're having. Anyway, I've got the same scenario here. I've got to give enough run time in both locations so that the train can trigger the turnout before it gets to the turnout. Uh, also make sure that the, the uh, train fits within the AR1. And as you can see, this is the maximum train, eight cars that I would take up to uh, Port Smith and it fits well within there. So here's what I'd like to get done. We're gonna go through and lay that track I just talked about. We're gonna measure out where the AR1 and all that crap happens. And uh, by the end of this episode, we'll have at least that nailed down. Then if there's more time, I'm just gonna keep laying track or roadbed or something because it's so exciting and I can't wait to do it. Let me get this train cleaned off of this thing, vacuum up some of the errant uh, styrofoam I still got lying around, and then uh, we'll put down a piece of track. All right, so to uh, get going with our stack train reversing loop, first thing we'll look at is the automated turnout right here. Now, here's the thing. I've already prepared this turnout for installation and I've pinned it in. By preparing it for installation, what I mean is I've cut out the railroad ties, I've uh, filed down the ends of the rails, I've put the rail joiners on, I took the spring out of the turnout on this one, drilled a hole in the bottom of it to receive the rod that comes up from the switch motor. Now, here's the thing. That whole process and mounting the switch motor and making the wiring happen is kind of an episode unto itself, really. So rather than getting bogged down in that right now, why don't we go ahead and just put in the piece of track from this turnout back, and then of course out and around on the loop, because uh, we're gonna cover a couple of cool things as we do that, and then we'll move over and get the one for the Port Smith line. So. To start with, I am going to get out a piece of track. All right, so I got a piece of my Pico Code 80 Flex tread out that I bought from Midwest Model Railroad, and we're just gonna fit this one in and get it glued down. So here's how I do it anyway, right? Uh, go ahead and I line up this end. Let's say that rail right there, we'll just line it up with the turnout so everything looks groovy. Then we grab a pin and we pin that in there and grab a pin and pin that in there. Then we work our way down the line, pinning that track right where we want it. The reason I'm doing that is, and I'm sure everybody, I'm sure everybody already knows this, but the reason I do this is because the length of those rails are gonna change as I get it in the exact right position. So I go ahead and put it in the exact right position. Why is that so tough? It's not, let's just make it happen. So I just keep going around and around and pinning that sucker in. All right, so there you go. I've got it pinned in from here to the turnout back there. And so what I can see right here is, well, first of all, my rail's a little short. We're gonna see if we can lengthen it. I 
There. Ah. That was easy. All right, so I've got this rail right here sticking out too long. Now, a lot of guys will do this a lot of different ways. My preferred method is to go right there with my nippers and nip it. Okay, now here's the thing with, with uh, rail nippers, and some of you may know this, some of you may not. This side right here is flat. This side right here has got a bevel in it. This side needs to be the side to the rail that you want to keep and, and have pretty. This side, when you snip it, uh, the rail tends to get crushed or screwed up or whatever. So when I do this, I make sure that I got the flat side there where the rail is going to join up. So anyway, that's that. Now I can go to the other side and do the same thing. So here at the other side of the track, looking for where it joins up. And it looks like right right here okay so I got the track over to the other turnout what we're gonna do now is go through and cut out the railroad tie at each end file off the bottom of the rail where there's probably a little burr from cutting it and sort of prep the end of the rails I did a video about how I prep my track that uh, maybe you want to go take a look at after this one it's a uh, there's a card above my head link in the description you can check it out then but for right now i just want to keep going with this so let me get this piece of track prepped and we'll stick it on there and then we'll move on to the loop all right so i got that piece of track laid in there pinned in there test fitting it making sure it fits and i gotta tell you uh this may be one of the best pieces of track i've ever dry fitted onto the layout yay me but enough celebrating what i want to do now is pull this track out lay down some of that caulking put the track back in and pin it in place and let it set up there. So we're kind of on our way to making that loop. Let me get out the caulking, put this thing down, boom, we'll move forward. And there you go. I uh, I have put down the first piece of track with the caulking to hold it in place. I have used my finger to fix some stuff that got messed up. Put that right there, I think. Uh, you didn't see that, right? Anyway, so I'm gonna let that set up. Now here's the thing. Um, I stopped it short of the turnout and I stopped it short of the turnout. And here's what I'm gonna try this time around. I seem to have a problem with my turnouts. I torque them, I screw them up, I don't know what. So over there at Brownsville, when I replaced the turnout there, again, if, if you haven't seen that episode, there's a card above my head, link in the description, but I just floated it. I let the turnout go where it was gonna go instead of putting weights or something down on the track. So I think this time around, um, we'll ultimately glue this down with the ballast. Uh, not gonna glue it down now, just not feeling it. So uh, this is what you get, once this dries, and I can actually solder the rail joiners on at this location and that location, uh, that turnout's not gonna go anywhere. So uh, let's just move on from there to the actual loop itself because there's something I wanna share with you over there. All right, so as we move into the reversing loop for the stack train, uh, remember I cut this uh, piece of cork roadbed here at 16 and a half inches. The reason I did cork roadbed is so I can bend it around the locations, uh, easier than trying to get a tape measure to bend in a circle. Anyway, I just uh, I decided to use this route. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and line this up as if it were a piece of track I was laying and get it right down to the end. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark right there uh, along the end. Now that's not exactly straight. We'll figure that out when we get there. But on this side, there's a block detector. On this side is an AR1 auto reverser. I need to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll just go through and do that real quick. Then we'll, uh, we'll see if we can put the first piece of track in. So just ahead of putting in the first couple of pieces of track, something I want to show you real quick. Um, we've got the regular rail joiner here that's metal. Then we have an insulated one. Then I've got a regular one and I've got an insulated one. These insulated rail joiners are because of the BD 
for the block detector we have coming down this side of the layout. One of the rails needs to be isolated from the rest of the layout so that the BD4 can sense the train there and in essence push a button that flips the turnout. So uh, on both sides, right up to that point, we need to have it insulated on the same rail going back. Again, when we get a little further along, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how we're doing that. But for right now, I would like to just get this piece of track laid in up to here and this piece of track laid in up to there, at least with pins, and then put the rest of it around. So let me get laid up for that and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, well, it seems like that went really well. We've got our two uh, lead-in pieces, I don't know what you call them, uh, that we're gonna connect the BD4 to that tells the turnout what to go do with itself when a train's approaching, so that's kinda cool. But now we're gonna get into a part of model railroading that frankly is not one of my favorite parts. Well, let me give you a little background. In the rest of this loop, there is too much length for a single piece of flex track, so what does that mean? That means we're gonna somewhere in that loop, we're gonna join two pieces of flex track. Um, I'm no good at it. I hate doing that. I always end up with this. I always end up with some kind of a cocked mechanism. I've watched the videos. I've watched people do it. I can't get it right. So I've come up with my own regular guy technique for doing it. And so here's what we're gonna do. I've prepared over on this side of the layout, two pieces of track, full on length flex track that I'm going to go ahead and solder rail joiners on just as straight as an arrow and as flat as a board. This way, when I get over here to the loop to install it, I can just bend it on around and I've got this perfect loop, no kinked rail joiners, boom, Bob's your uncle, I can finish this piece of track. So uh, real quick, I think what I'll do is I'll actually take you over here and uh, we'll just spend like 10 seconds watching me solder this. It's not really that exciting. And then we'll put it back over here and mark it out, cut it, and caulk it down. All right, so soldering these rail joiners on here is not like some big revelation uh, I'm about to show you. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm showing this to you now is because I'm going to employ some techniques that I learned actually from our subscribers that have helped guide me in learning to be a better solderer -er, because uh, soldering, never my favorite thing, always hated it, but you know, it's, uh, I'm getting better at it, so we're gonna go for it. Uh, you can see right here, I've got this first rail joiner lined up centered on the, uh, the rail there in the exact position we want. So the first, we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is get our good friend the uh, rosin here and uh, put a little on the brush and go ahead and just brush along there where we're going to apply the solder. Now I've seen people do this and they uh, don't talk about why. Apparently the uh, the rosin will lower the melting point of the solder so it flows very quickly. Then what we're supposed to do is dip the soldering iron in the rosin like that. Doesn't that smell good? And get the soldering iron over where we want it. Heat the rails up. Apply that solder and it just flows right in there. Kind of like that. Wowzers. That was quick, uh, especially for me. Uh, not bad at all.
Okay, so with the stack train loop kind of setting up over there with the old caulking we did, um, I'm gonna go ahead then and work on the loop for the Portsmouth line. And this is a little more tricky because I determined I need to put a curved turnout in right here so that I can make this transition into this space back here. Back there is gonna be the engine terminal, it's gonna have a refueling facility, whatever I can squeeze in there. But because it's a curved turnout and it's on a curve anyway, I have to kind of get it lined up with how the natural curve would go. So what I did, I went ahead and I uh, pinned down a piece of flex track just from straight to curved and then whatever and put these two turnouts together and then I just sort of inched them along until I found a place where it seems the natural curve of that curve is gonna mate right up with that. So I went back and over here, I put a little mark in where the throw bar is, or throw rod is for, the, uh, for that turnout. So what I can do now, I think, is pull everything off of there and then uh, start working on putting this piece of track in out to where it goes. Now, keep in mind, again, I'm gonna show you guys how I drill the hole, pull the spring, set the insulated rail joiners, yada, 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 and a whole thing probably next week when we start wiring this sucker up for racing. So I think that was a pretty productive day here in the hobby room. We've got the turnaround loop for the stack train installed. We also have the loop for the uh, Port Smith line installed right up to where the track gets straight and we head off into other parts of the layout. Uh, one of the things I'd like to show you though, uh, one of the reasons I don't put weights on my track anymore, especially near a turnout when I'm gluing it down is this. Let me show you something. Right back here you can see I've got the caulking in there, but even now there's some wiggle left in that track. Here's what that tells me. That tells me that where the turnout is and where the leading track is coming up to it, some kind of way it's not perfect. Uh, there where the roadbed is, some kind of way it's uh, not mating up correctly. So if I put a weight right there to make sure that sticks down, in my opinion, it's gonna sort of wanna bend and warp the turnout. And the only thing I can attribute to being consistent with the problems I have with my turnouts is that sort of thing. When I fix the turnout up there in Brownsville, I didn't put any weights around it anywhere. I let the ballast hold everything in place and it has been running flawlessly since then. So anyway, I think that's about all we're gonna be able to get done today. So why don't we just head back into the studio? And we're back in the studio. Bam, got that track laid. I gotta tell you, uh, laying track is fun. Not my numero uno in model railroading, but it's fun, especially when I get to put some cars on there and kind of push them around with my fingers and watch them go, oh, this train's gonna look so cool snaking through those loops. Um, I am really excited about trying to get that part operational even before we move. So anyway, listen, this is the kind of stuff we do here on It's My Railroad Sidetracked and our talk show, Track Smack. Make sure you tune in for the Track Smack, by the way. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, just again, go ahead and subscribe. And then make sure you like and share this video with somebody. And don't forget to connect with us during the course of the week on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, thank you so much for being here with me on It's My Railroad. My name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends.